Welcome to The Chosen, Day 15, Rock, based on Matthew 16, verses 18 to 19. Let's look that up. Matthew's in the New Testament, and we are going to back it up a little bit, and we are going to start with verse 13, Peter's confession of Christ. When Jesus came to the region of Caesarea Philippi, he asked the disciples, Who do people say the Son of Man is? They replied, Some say John the Baptist, others say Elijah, and still others, Jeremiah, or one of the prophets. But what about you, he asked, who do you say that I am? I love verse 16. Simon Peter answered, you are the Christ, the son of the living God. Jesus replied, blessed are you, Simon, son of Jonah, for this was not revealed to you by man, but by my father in heaven. And I tell you that you are Peter and on this rock, I will build my church and the gates of Hades will not overcome it. Rock. His name was Simon. So what a strange and presumptuous how do you do to be told your new name would be Peter? I'm sorry, what? His brother, Andrew, was all in already. He'd been a disciple of John the Baptist, and when John identified Jesus as the Messiah, it was all the proof Andrew needed. He became one of Jesus' first disciples, and he was good at it. By all accounts, Andrew was steady, studied, good nature, and easy to have around. And for Simon, eh, not so much. Simon Peter was emotional. When Jesus tried to wash his feet, Peter refused to allow the master's humbling act of service. But Jesus answered him, If I do not wash you, you do not have share with me. So Simon Peter said to him, Lord, not my feet only, but also my hands and my head. John 13 verses 8 to 9. As it often did, the feelings pendulum swung. Simon Peter was impulsive. When soldiers came to arrest Jesus, Peter drew his sword and cut off a guy's ear. John 18 verse 10. It was perhaps the most ineffective countermeasure possible to take on an entire temple guard by way of one man's ear. Not sure what the plan was there. Sometimes Simon Peter was afraid of stuff. After Jesus' arrest, all of Peter's ear-cutting bravado vanished. To avoid being arrested, he denied even knowing Jesus, not once, but three times, just as Christ predicted that he would. Verses 17 and then 25 to 27. All of his instability begs the question, why did Jesus call him Peter? Especially considering the name Peter means rock. The answer, Jesus makes us what we're not. And I'm so glad for that. Notice some correlations between pre-Jesus Peter and post-Jesus Peter. Pre-Jesus Peter was directed by emotion. Post-Jesus Peter was directed by his intense love for Jesus. Pre-Jesus Peter was impulsive. Post-Jesus Peter was stable, but the culture was not. Christianity was changing everything, and leading that charge required the ability to adjust, pivot, and respond to the Holy Spirit on the fly. Pre-Jesus Peter was afraid. Post-Jesus Peter was afraid of ever turning his back on Jesus again, therefore becoming fearless regarding everything else. And the same power that transformed the unruly fishermen is at work in all who believe. Jesus accepts us as we are, but he knows who we'll become by his power. And he's making us what we're not yet. Oh, that was good. I think that was one of my favorite ones. I love how there's a pre-Jesus Peter because there's a pre-Jesus Nancy and there's a pre-Jesus fill in your name. We all have how we were before we met Jesus, but then there's the post-Jesus Peter and the post-Jesus Nancy and the post-Jesus you, which is so exciting because that is gone in the past. This is who we are now and just how exciting to think what he's going to do with us in the future. I'll read the prayer focus. God, right now we ask for you to reveal any sinful part of us that we might just think, well, that's just the way I am. But really, Lord, you want to make us something that we are not. And so we just pray right now, Lord, that we would just lift up whatever part of us that might be and whatever sinful part, Lord, just cleanse us. You say that you are faithful to forgive us and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness, Lord. And so we just pray that you would cleanse us and then just show us what you want us to be, Lord, and just help us to believe that you can make us that way um, in your power. And we thank you for that today. In Jesus' name, amen. All right, let's look at moving forward. Number one, what are your primary weaknesses? 
Okay, primary weaknesses. Well, let's see, how much time do we have here, folks? Um, I would say sometimes just not believing that, that he can make me what he wants me to be. That would be one. Um, another weakness would be um, maybe not always like listening to other people and sometimes wanting to have my agenda to be done and not listening to other people or listening to God. So doing things my way. Um, I think those probably are my two big ones. There are quite a few, you know, but um, we don't need to share all that laundry right now, do we? But it is, it is good important to think about what our weaknesses are, isn't it? Number two. In what ways have you seen God transform your heart and mind? I've definitely seen transformation in my heart and my mind. Um, With my mind, I think he's helped me overcome fear. You know, when my kids were little, I was always kind of afraid. What if something happened to them? Um, My husband was in a major accident, and so I think that kind of leads to some of that fear. Um, But God has really helped just heal that and just trust that we're all in his care. And then um, as far as my heart, just to be more loving, because, you know, it can just be hard sometimes. I mean, people can be difficult. And so, you know, it is hard to always be loving everybody. But when you just really give your heart to him, he can just do a transformation in your heart and your mind and uh, make you who he wants you to be. So I pray today that you're open to that, that he can make you a better person than you are right now. Number three. Write down a weakness you want to turn into a strength and commit to praying for help and working on it. That is really good. I think it's really important to write things down. It's good to journal if you can do that or even just like write notes in your Bible because when you write things down, then it helps you remember it and to kind of stick with it. So I hope today that we can all think of a weakness that we have. So just think for a minute what that might be and then just ask God to help you. He wants to transform you. He wants to make your fears go away. He wants you to have more trust in him. He wants you to go out there and do bold things for him. And most importantly, remember, there is a pre-Jesus you and a post-Jesus you. And that old you is gone once you believe in Jesus. And don't waste any more time worrying about that old person. Just get out there and do great things for God. Believe in him. Believe he can transform your heart and your mind. And be bold, just like Peter was. Have a great day being bold, and I will see you tomorrow. You can get your own chosen devotional mailed right to your house, season one or season two. They also have great Bible studies from season one and season two. Simply go to thechosengifts.com to find all kinds of great chosen merchandise.